Jelly Spoons to Kai Matthews YouTube channel and vlog number two for June 2023. It's been an absolutely fantastic month for us here at the Orbital Underground Bunker, only slightly smeared by the fact that we don't think we're going to get a video out this week. Uh, but you know, as I always say, this is very much my hobby, not my full-time career. I thought I'd try and mix these up a little bit by doing videos out and about. I'm not kidding, the Retro Ghetto makes filming on your phone look far easier than it is. So props to you, sir. about today uh, doing my shopping and reflecting on the games that we've covered in this month of May. So sit back, relax and let's have a look shall we. This month's uh, retro roundup again off the top of my head what did we look at? The first one that springs to mind just because um, there's not a proper thumbnail for the video so it's the unofficial thumbnail for the video uh, is Jazz Jack Rabbit 2. Jazz Jack Rabbit 2, a platform game produced by Epic Mega Games. It was released for Windows and later for the Macintosh, like uh, which is a game I have very fond memories of. Uh, I think it was uh, on like my first or second computer ever um, that I had it, and it's just such a daft silly game. And to think that people who made it are the people who now make Fortnite uh, is ridiculous and like, why Jazz Jack Rabbit has not appeared in Fortnite or maybe he has and I'm just unaware of that because I don't really play Fortnite. Um, another one that springs to mind, Call of Juarez, Gunslinger. I had no choice. Well, shoot that some bitch. Call of Juarez Gunslinger, a first-person shooter developed by Techland and originally published by Ubisoft. It which is a bit of a spin, sort of a spin-off, or sort of micro-sequel, as you might want to call it. Uh, the only Call of Juarez game I've actually properly played was the second one, uh, Bound in Blood. Um, I have a real penchant, shall we say, for the Western, like old Wild West aesthetic, so I really, really liked both Gunslinger and Bound in Blood. I should really go back and try the first one. If you haven't necessarily guessed it, um, I was running a bit low or short of a, a game that I particularly wanted to cover at the end of the video for the 10 year marker. And so, yes, Flaffy Bird. Flappy Bird. Flappy Bird? Yes, Flappy Bird. A mobile game developed by Vietnamese video game artist and programmer Dong Nguyen. I'm sure you're saying that wrong. It was a little bit of a, I don't want to call it palate cleanser, but a little bit of a, a jokey end to the video because we'd covered Star Wars and uh, Asteron Belt at the beginning, marking their 40th anniversary, anniversaries. So I thought, yeah, chuck Flappy Bird in because it, whatever you kind of want to say about like mobile gaming, you can't sort of deny the effect that that game had on uh, mobile gaming as a, as a platform. It is one of the games that bolstered mobile gaming as a quote unquote legitimate platform. Be easy to talk about series creator Shirigeru, Shir, sh, Shigeru, Shigeru, Shigeru. Kingdom came out after the book was published. Where is the book, by the way? And production materials. Oh, uh, oh uh, no, 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 got it wrong, got it wrong. This month's uh, retrospective review, which was on Silent Hill 3. Yeah. Today, we delve into the world of Silent Hill 3 in this month's 20th anniversary retrospective review. It is Again. a little bit of a milestone for me. Um, I'd always hoped to cover 
game series when I started the retrospective series that was kind of what I was going to do which was sort of like follow series you know over the years and it's always been a bit of a bugbear a bit of a regret of mine that because I'm such a big Resident Evil fan there was a lot of times when I missed uh, Resident Evil games hitting their 20th anniversary I think what I've only done Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3. However, what I have done is I've covered Silent Hill 1, I've covered Silent Hill 2, and this month we covered Silent Hill 3. Maybe even the lesser known creator, you know, co-creator, today, then both... Ah, me pipe! Um, I don't know if it necessarily comes across in the review. I actually really like Silent Hill 3 because it's a direct sequel to Silent Hill 1. It sort of picks up it doesn't really pick up where the game left off, but it, I like that it was a direct sequel to the first game. Um, in a lot of ways, I sort of prefer it to two. The art of Silent Hill, no, the art and music. Bloody hell, get it right, man. The Legend of Zelda, oh, hang on, I've got it here. <laughs> I've got it here, I should use it. It's free after all, and it helps us outgrow. It helps us outgrow? <laughs> I've been outside, I have touched some grass. I feel it is now time to return to the orbital broadcast bunker and more importantly put my shopping away. Well it's alright lad, I'll, I'll, I guess I'll tidy up when shall I? I'll put the bloody book away. Talk about the series creator, Shigeru. Shigeru. <laughs> Fucking hell. Psst. Got it right. <laughs> it is filming day today so as I have done in many vlogs before for people who might remember them, uh, let's set up the studio. <laughs> There we have it, all set up, ready for another exciting afternoon of filming. It's always a faff to get this on. Fun fact, I actually made this uh, myself, God knows how many years ago, uh, when I was at university. It was something that I used to wear uh, on nights out. Sort of by accident, sort of became part of the Kai Mathy costume. For those of you that want to know, uh, this little symbol here is from a board game called Thieves. It is a very straightforward sort of chess-esque board game for two players. I bought this at the Euro Board Games Expo in Birmingham. Uh, I want to say 2017, 2018? But it's certainly a game that I'm glad I sort of got this sort of first edition, I guess this would be. And yeah, very nice. So that's where this badge came from. Oh, look at that, what a big surprise. My uh, battery on the camera is about to run out and I have locked myself into <laughs> the studio. So as you can see there, if you can just see it, uh, the battery on the main camera is going to run out in a minute, which means I have to go and get the spare battery. Now, stupidly, I've left it outside of this room and you're about to see the hassle that I have to go through if I leave something outside the studio when I begin filming because it's quite tight in here. So what I have to do is knock you down a bit, drag you forward, try not to catch the uh, umbrella itself or the camera down here. I want to bash the back of the umbrella, squeeze it a little bit. Six and a half hours later. I need them. Lovely. All right, and there we have it. A wrap on another successful video in session. Now to get to editing. I didn't turn this bloody, I didn't turn the bloody microphone on. Oh, I'm a twat. So, ladles and jelly spoons, what have I been playing this month? Well, there have been two games that have been dominating an awful lot of my time, but there is one game that I've been playing that is an absolute gem of a game it is such a nice, easy, five minute game to play whenever I've got a spare few minutes, and that is Vampire Survivor. It has no overarching plotline, there's no massive narrative, there's no 
in-depth storyline. This is just a really simple pick up and play game with one simple objective. There is your character, survive as long as you can. I'm pretty sure it's available on PlayStation, PC, Nintendo Switch and Games Pass. If you have any of those, I thoroughly recommend picking it up. It's also really cheap. I think to pick it up on Steam, it's like three or four quid. It's on Games Pass at the minute, which is where I've been playing it. Brilliant game, highly recommend. As far as other games are concerned, first up we have Star Wars Jedi Survivor, a follow-up game to the absolutely phenomenal Jedi, no sorry, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. A Souls-like with a Star Wars skin. What more could a growing boy want? Bucket heads below. No going around them. Then we go through them. I'm ready when you are, Kestis. Enemies nearby. <laughs> Enemy approaching us. Oh, got one of us. Hey, oh, and I believe they're working on a third. I do, however, have one small caveat. This game's ending was unfortunately and accidentally spoiled for me by somebody. And yeah. Usually I don't care about spoilers in a video game. I'm not, I don't try to stay pure as it were. I don't get too worried about it, but if I'm really enjoying a video game, if I'm really invested in it, it can really throw me for six if someone basically spoils the ending or like really leaks a, a major plot point. And somebody did for this game and I was playing it that evening or the following day and knowing where the storyline was going, it just sapped a lot of the fun out of it, especially considering in some cases in this game, the very hard almost vertical learning curve that you sometimes go through. And so because of that, I've sort of stopped playing it. Now I probably will complete the game. As I say, I believe they're working on a third in the series. So when that gets announced, I'll probably come back to this and probably play through it. But for now, it's just gonna sit and look pretty on the shelf. Okay, you can fight. Yeah, you too. I don't speak binary, but I hear you BD. Team effort. And finally this month, it should be no surprise what I'm playing, and that is... Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I am still playing this, I haven't completed it yet. There appears to me there are two types of people playing this game. People who have somehow worked out how to make orbital lasers and are nuking everything from orbit just to be sure, and people who are still trying to work out how to get two things to merge together to form a bigger sword. Um, I'm in that category. As I say, I haven't actually completed this game. I'm still playing it. I'm still having an awful lot of fun in it. It is exactly what I wanted out of the next Zelda game. Absolutely phenomenal. If you have a Switch you and you do not own this, what, why do you own a Switch? This is the game that you own a Switch for. Okay, ladles and jelly spoons. Well, it is getting very warm here in the Orbital Broadcast Bunkers engine room, so I think it's a good place to bring this vlog to a close. If you have made it to the end of the video, thank you so much. Please be sure to let me know what you thought in the comment section down below. And if by some strange turn of events you are not subscribed to the channel, but you are still watching, please do go and check out some other videos from us on the channel and consider subscribing. It is free after all, and you can always just unsubscribe later, but it means a lot to us if you do actually subscribe. It helps us grow our little patch here on YouTube. Ta-ra for now. We shall see you on Friday.